Hi hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial video. Uh, today's video is about part two of the Night Haunt Ember spells. So this one's going to be the Mortalis Terminexus, which is the hourglass, as you can see. Uh, now, before I get started, I do apologise for taking a while to upload this video. I have been moving, so it's just been a bit difficult trying to find time to do the voiceover and uploading of this video. Uh, but yeah, to get started, I'm going to be using the Abaddon Black. Uh, and that's just going to be for the top and bottom of the hourglass. As normal, I'm going to be using a wet palette. So I do this. You're for, I'm going to keep repeating that. I do do it on every single video. Do do. Uh, you don't want to use too much water, otherwise it will just be harder to apply to the miniature. But a few coats will do the trick. You get a nice smooth coat over the top. You'll get the result that you want in the end. Do the hand pinchy thing as I normally do. Gets into a nice point when applying the paint. But as I said, to start off with, I'm going to be going from going on the top of the hourglass to the bottom. That uh, doesn't need to be too neat on this part. Probably because it's a dark colour, you're going to want to try be quite careful because I want to leave the flames on top white for now. Just so then I can go over them with the hex ray foam later on. Now what I really like about this endless spell is you can either choose to reverse time or hasten time. So if you reverse time you can heal D3 wounds allocated to each unit on the field. Or if you choose to hasten time, you can actually deal D3 mortal wounds to other units within six inches. There you go, making sure to go all the way around the sides, making sure it's completely covered. If you do miss any, you can go back, it's not a problem. But you're going to want to try and make sure it's fully covered so to avoid having to go back through the colours then. Yeah, so I've skipped through the video just so then we can pick it up a bit, pick up the pace. Yeah, so around the edges of this, I'm actually using the side of the brush. Like you don't have to, but it's, I find it a little bit easier just to apply to around thin edges. You'll see me doing that later on when I'm doing highlights and things like that as well. As I'm sure you'd, you've already gathered by this point with the amount of videos that I've posted of this, um, Night Haunt is my favourite army in Age of Sigma. So I do aim to try and paint others as well. But where I've got so many unpainted miniatures of the Night Haunt, the first initial tutorials are going to be based around them. So I mean, if anyone has any suggestions on 
what I should paint, let me know and I can order it and paint it. That's not going to be a problem. So the Abaddon black is basically done now. Done the top and bottom, just making sure it's completely covered. And I will be also uploading a part three of the Endless Spells. But now I'm all fully moved in, it should be a bit quicker to upload my videos. Watching this tutorial back, I did realise that some of the paints I didn't actually show to the camera. So uh, at this part, I'm actually using the Retributor armor, which you, well, which as you've seen in the previous videos, is gold, and that is just going to be for very tiny, tiny parts on the hourglass itself. So it's going to be like the handles going down each side, and each of these studs around the edge of the top.
as you can see I have gone over some places and gone onto the black but I will go around and touch up again that's not a problem but the good thing with going over on the black the Abaddon black covers other paints very easily so there's not too much to worry about So the next colour that I use is the race bone, so, and this is just going to be for the skulls on the side of the hourglass. So you don't need much of this, because obviously there's not many skulls to be painting with it. But again, always use a wet palette, you get better coverage that way. And make sure it's nice consistency. Clean the brush. And pin sheet, and ready to go. You will notice when I skip forward on the video again that I've actually cut out part of my tutorial which I did not intend on doing. So I'll be going from painting the skulls to pretty much finishing off the hourglass itself. So I do apologise for this. So obviously with all the pressure of moving and things like that, it's been quite complicated getting things on track. But you will see it skips forward shortly and you will see the difference basically yeah so going from painting the bones to painting the hourglass as you can see I've done alright there with my editing skills so I did use the corn red for that so, and I do use a couple of coats as well just to make sure it's a nice smooth coat.
Right, so that's the cornbread basically done now. Just going through doing a few touch up. Not that you see me do most of it, but good to skip ahead sometimes until you do my editing skills and then you skip through too much. So just making sure I've done a nice clean coat over the whole lot. Make sure it's completely covered. So moving on to the next part, I'm now going to do a bit of shading on the bars by the side of the hourglass. So this is just to dull them down and I'm going to use the main colour that I always like to use. That's an old oil. My trusty old oil, I absolutely love using that and that's why I've got about three pots of it. So the old oil is very good if you want to darken and dull things down a bit and it just adds great shading. I cannot praise it enough. So it's apply quite a decent amount on the sides. Making sure it's completely covered and as you can see already, even though it's at a bit of a distance, it is darkening it down a bit so it doesn't look very new. Pretty much both sides are done now, completely covered, covered in known oil. Darken it down a bit, make it look dull. So next bit I'm going to be moving on to now is the flames. So this is the part I like because it's obviously the majority part of the miniature. And it just adds great colour to it, makes it stand out a hell of a lot more, especially the red. No, green, red against green just looks great. So there you go, I showed it to the camera this time. It's a hex ray flame. So, and that again, I'm just gonna slap it all over the flames. Now we've got to be neat about it, just throw it on. And it just helps out so much in making the red stand out.
there you go so as you can see the green is really making the red stand out on the hourglass as it brings it all together and it's absolutely fantastic Making sure that's completely covered. It's okay having some few, a few little white bits showing through. Yeah. But I like to make it completely covered because I had another shade on top of this one later on anyway. So now I'm done with the hex race flame. The next part I'm going to be going over is the hourglass itself again with the Caraba Crimson. Again, this is just to dull it down a bit. Normally on flat surfaces, shades don't really work. But if you want to just darken something down a little bit, it really helps it. Instead of having it as a um, like in-your-face red, it just darkens it down quite a bit. Now that's all done with. And now I'm going to go around and do some highlights on it now. So all of the faces on the flames itself, I'm going to be doing some highlights on the hourglass itself as well. I'm going to be doing a few highlights. So it just makes them stand out that little bit more from like the flames itself, and just adds a bit of shade into the hourglass to make it look a bit more glass. So, what I'm going to be using to shade it's not actually a dry brush uh, dry paint that I'm going to be using but I tend to use it as a dry paint as you all know through previous videos give it a good shape so, well the one I'm going to be using is the also in grey so I'll be showing that to the camera shortly so you'll be able to see how it's spelt but this is really good for dry brushing. Although it's a layer paint, it is good if you want to add some highlights and things like that. So it's a decent amount on a dry brush. I'm using a medium dry brush for this, by the way. Right, and pretty much wipe all the paint off it until you've got hardly anything coming off. You should be able to see as I lightly go over the edges and the faces, the spirit faces. You'll be able to see that it just catches the edges.
it going through there. I think I'm moving. There you go. Yeah, so you can see it just highlights the ghostly faces on the flame. So as you can see, I'm only going to be highlighting the one side of the hourglass. So that would be like the sun is shining on that part. It makes it look really good actually when it's finished. So, as you can see, it's just added a bit of a uh, bit of a highlight to one side of the glass. I've left it quite dark on the other side. So added a few highlights to the skulls on the sides. There you go, using the side of the brush again just to catch the very edge, so it looks like the sun's hitting it. Now the highlights are done, I move on to the Cassandora yellow and that's going to be going all over the flame as well. So I normally do this on my previous videos which I did on the Shyish Reaper so, and that gives a nice greeny yellow flame. So you can already see the difference there. You go from a ghostly green to like a sort of darker yellowy green, which is the best description I can give, unfortunately. Yeah, so that's that basically done now. Making sure it's completely covered on that. So I do go back and shade the hourglass again, but that's also just to dull down then the highlights make the glass bit a bit darker so that's completely done there we go so that way Then go back to the Caraberg Crimson just to finish off the hourglass itself. And that I just literally slap it on, so there's no you ain't got to worry about being about making your highlights disappear because they will show through. That's not a problem.
Right, so that is the Mortalis Terminexus done. Okay, other than the base, obviously, but I will be going over that off camera. Uh, as usual, I will be doing a, eventually be doing a tutorial on basing miniatures. But just for now, I'm just going to be going over yeah, the miniature itself. But for this, I'm going to be using the Armageddon Dust again with some known oil and some highlights. And that is the end of the tutorial video for the Mortalis Terminexus. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, as you can see I've done the base a slightly green colour just to resemble the reflection of the flames. Or the glow of the flames should I say. Yeah, I will be uploading part 3 very shortly hopefully. All, right. All things aside this has been fun. Uh, if you like my channel don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Cheers.